In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Immaculate Heart of Mary, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, the 13th of May, the church celebrates the memory of Fatima and celebrates Our Lady, under her title, Our Lady of Fatima, uh, an event extremely important uh, in our time in the 20th century and still unfolding. Pope Benedict the 16th in 2010 at Fatima uh, gave a series of very interesting uh, talks, his comments uh, in various locations there in Portugal before the Mass and then in his homily. And one of the points that he made is, first of all, he said that uh, it would be a mistake to think that Fatima is over, that the event of Fatima and the message given uh, was concluded. So uh, he pointed to the fact that the church places great importance on the message and that the events foretold therein are not yet completed. Uh, He said that certainly in the vision that was given uh, in which the Holy Father uh, is killed by soldiers, he said that in that we can see, or in the attempt on the life of uh, St. Pope John Paul II that happened in 1981, that we could see uh, that foretold in the message, but that that wasn't the only aspect of that particular event, and that in the person of the Pope, the church is personified. So the Pope represents the church, and what happened uh, in that vision could also be understood as uh, an indication of the persecution that the church is undergoing. The church is the continuation of Christ's mission on earth, and uh, it is known as the sacrament of salvation. And we could also say that the church is, in a way, the sacrament of the incarnation. The church uh, represents Christ, and Christ is in the church in each one of us, and in the church, uh, which is not present only on earth, but also in heaven. Through the Eucharist, Jesus becomes present to us and stays with us for all time. And the church seeks to be Christ to the world in her members, in her teaching, uh, in the love that we give. And so we imitate Christ. And the vision of Fatima uh, can be understood also in this way, that uh, what happened to Christ also happens to the church. And so the Holy Father mentioned also the idea of the passion of the church. And uh, that is what the church is undergoing in time, not only in our time, but in our time in a very particular way. And so Our Lady was sent by God to Fatima to give us a message, and a message primarily of hope and mercy, The things that were foretold were also, uh, as all of these prophecies of warning, uh, conditional on our response. But as we see things going, apparently uh, the response wasn't what Our Lady asked for. She asked one of the things, the prayer of the rosary. And at the time she asked it, um, it was very common in families all over the world in Catholic families to pray the rosary every day gathered together. And so millions and millions and millions of rosaries were prayed daily. In our day and age, 
uh, it's a relative minority of the faithful who continue this devotion faithfully. And so uh, in the time since the message, uh, evil has spread, and she mentioned the errors of Russia, uh, atheist materialism, and uh, just the idea, uh, the socialist idea, which has not only uh, you know, run its course in the most obvious way in Russia, but then in a more subtle way has spread its tentacles throughout the world. So the message of Fatima continues to be relevant and also uh, foretells certain, in some way, uh, the trajectory that we can expect. And our Lord, at the foot of the cross, well, he was on the cross, and Mary was there at the foot of the cross, and he gave to the church in the person of St. John, who was present, he gave the Blessed Virgin Mary as our mother to us. Behold your mother. And so Mary here today uh, and at Fatima is with us as the church goes through its passion. She accompanies us and she gives us hope. Uh, she, she told the three shepherd children that her, her immaculate heart was the sure refuge and the way to God. And so she is with us, she's with the church as the church suffers today through a persecution that seems to be growing. Uh, but she gives us the hope to endure and she won't leave our, our side just as she wouldn't leave the side of her son Jesus in his suffering. And while she gave the children a vision of hell, she also gave them a vision of heaven. And the whole event of Fatima was preceded uh, or began with a visit from the angel of peace. So the church today in celebrating Fatima uh, also celebrates that, that hope and that comfort that we have in the maternal mediation of the Blessed Virgin Mary who foretold what was coming and who also foretold that she would be the sure refuge and the way to God through her immaculate heart. So that's a message that wasn't new, but just a, a very dramatic reiteration of the truth of what the church has always known and believed, uh, that Mary is our mother and that if we want to be with Jesus or to get to Jesus or to be like Jesus, uh, she is the one who guides us, who shapes us, and who helps us be faithful uh, till the very end and to arrive at glory finally after we suffer with Jesus, uh, the passion and the cross. So we thank God for and our Lord Jesus for giving us his mother, and we accept with gratitude and with confidence uh, what she offers us, her love and her intercession. And we place the needs of the Holy Father, who uh, that image in the vision, as I said, represents the church in the Holy Father, but in a particular way represents the Holy Father. And so uh, as he suffers, uh, now, in a particular way, we, we unite with him and we pray for him and entrust him to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, our sure refuge and our way to God. Praise be Jesus and Mary.